17.8 what would be the net profit after adjusting this error so adjustment to profit a business statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st December showed a net profit of 83,600 so your profit is 83,600 it was later found that 18,000 paid for the purchase of motor vehicle had been debited to the motor expenses account it is the company's policies to depreciate motor vans at 25 percent per year okay now this is if you remember we discussed this topic we called it error of principle and i explained it in with the help of an example that error of principle means when you are you know debiting or crediting or charging a wrong account like a, an opex account is being uh, probably replaced or mistaken with a capex account so there will be a difference in profit whenever a capex is treated as opex or an opex is treated as capex because one opex should go to income statement capex goes to the balance sheet so something you should take to the balance sheet you are bringing it to the income statement so it will affect the profit and this is called error of principle uh, in error of commission the profit does not change because in error of commission like if you remember from the lecture first video that electricity expense you treat as telephone expense both are expenses both should go to the income statement so even if you replace electricity expense with the telephone expense there will be no difference on profit but if you are buying a motor car you are purchasing a motor vehicle which is actually your capex and it should go to your statement of financial position but you take it as motor car repair account when you take it as repair account it is called opex and opex goes to the pnl as an expense so now of course there will be a difference in profit so how much you do it we remember that i'll do it quickly and then i'll explain your unadjusted unadjusted profit i mean the profit before the transaction was 83600 and motor vehicle was now this is a very typical example i explained in the lecture as well motor vehicle was how much was the value of motor vehicle 18000 and then you have got depreciation okay depreciation is 25% so how much is that 18000 multiplied by 25% so 4500 this is actually 13500 is the difference in profit i should say that add back wrong treated expense and i'll call it 13500 and I make a total here answer will be 97,100 let's first find the answer then I will explain 97,100 answer is option C now how did I do it C um, you took a motor vehicle on your balance sheet it I mean it it should have gone to balance sheet but you took it in your income statement OPEX so this was $18,000 this $18,000 it should go to the balance sheet it should go to the balance sheet as an asset okay but what you did that you took it into your PNL you took PNL as expense you recorded into your PNL profit and loss as an expense of 18,000 which was a mistake okay which was a mistake so this 18,000 should not come here it should go there so when you will remove it from here you say okay I'm taking it away and you take it into the balance sheet so the asset into the balance sheet will go 18,000 but from the balance sheet the depreciation will come in here because if there is an asset you are recording before you did not record asset here now if you record asset here the depreciation of that will come here 4500 listen whenever you buy an asset you take it to the balance sheet and asset goes to the balance sheet and from balance sheet depreciation comes to the income statement it means that logically in income statement 4500 of depreciation should come in 
but you did not bring in this 4,500 depreciation, you brought in the full expense of 18,000. So it means that the difference is the, I mean, 4,500 should come in any case. Okay. I am bringing in 18,000. So how much more I am bringing in? The difference is 13,500 I'm charging more. Like if I take it as an asset to the balance sheet, it does not mean, it does not mean that nothing will come to the income statement. Okay. If I say take asset to the balance sheet. So when you write an asset to the balance sheet, it does not mean I'm saying it does not mean that income statement will not be affected. Income statement, some expense will come. Some expense of 4,500 should come to the income statement. This should come to your PL, okay, in any case. But what you did, you took this into PL. Because when you took full 18,000 into PL, then this did not come in because you don't have an asset on the balance sheet. So instead of charging 4,500, you charge 18,000. So how much more you charge to income statement? That is 13,500. This concept I explained in very much detail in your uh, lecture video, the first video where I was explaining the error of principle. If you do not understand the concept, I would suggest that you go back and watch the video again. 17.11, the accountant at Investotech discovered the following errors after calculating the company's profit for 2003 after calculating um, yeah foreign errors a non current asset costing 50000 has been included in the purchases account again an error of principle stationery costing 10000 has been included as closing inventory of raw materials instead of stationery expenses so stationery costing 10000 has been recorded as closing inventory of raw materials instead of stationary expenses. So we know that uh, it was an expense stationary. It should be reported in your administrative expenses and decreasing your profit and a non-current asset. You also took it to the purchases account, like the cost of sale, the first part, which was also. So it looks like that your cost of sale is overstated. Let me write down here your cost of sale is overstated and your admin expenses are also overstated. Okay. You know that cost of sale comes above the gross profit and admin expenses are below the gross profit and say, what is the effect of these errors on gross profit and net profit? I know when I increase the gross profit, uh, I increase the cost of sale, your, your gross profit will go down. And then when you increase your admin expenses, your net profit will also be underestimated. This is the effect. Start reading the options. Option A, understatement of gross profit by 40,000 and understatement of net profit by 30,000. Understatement of net profit by 30,000. This is your answer because your gross profit is also understated and net profit is also understated, but amounts are different. Okay. Why amounts are different? I will explain you. Understatement of both gross profit and net profit by 40,000. That's not the option. An understatement of gross profit by 60,000 and under, an understatement of net profit by 50,000. This is also not the option. An overstatement of both gross overstatement is not possible. So this is again not the answer. You know, why did I took this uh, first part? Now that is a little bit tricky question. But once you do, the, you, you will remember. You know that you've got here uh, sales. Then you have your cost of sales. Within cost of sales, you have opening inventory plus you call it purchases and you say less closing inventory, right? Let's closing inventory. So what they are doing here, if you pay attention, it says that a non-current asset 50,000 has been included in the purchases account. So in purchases account, you added this 50,000 by mistake. So it means that your cost of sale, it is increasing by 50,000, but then if you read option B, stationary costing 10,000, 
stationery costing 10,000 has been included as closing inventory of raw materials. So where do you show your closing inventory of raw material? Your closing inventory of raw material comes in here, cost of sale part, okay? So you put my, this, and it is always subtracted, if you remember. Closing inventory is also, is always, how to say, subtracted. So this error is increasing the cost of sale. This is your first error, which is increasing the cost of sale. And the second error is decreasing the cost of sale. So the net result of these two is that your cost of sale is increased by 40,000. So if cost of sale is increased by 40,000, your gross profit is actually decreased by 40,000. So that's why this justifies it here. So the first part is justified. Why the difference came as 40,000? Because uh, first I increased the cost of sale by mistake. Then I decreased the cost of sale by mistake. And then of course this comes in. And what happened to the net profit? Stationary costing 10,000 has been included as closing inventory instead of stationary expenses. So this 30,000, this 10,000 was actually somewhere written here. Okay. This 10,000 should have been written here as stationary expense. Like after this thing, after the gross profit, you have admin expenses and this stationary expense should have been coming here. You did not take it here. So 40,000 minus this 10,000, 30,000 will be the impact on your net profit. 17.12. A purchase return of $48 has been wrongly posted to the debit side of sales return account, but has been correctly entered in the supplier's account, which means that supplier account, we did not make a mistake. We only like when you make when you make a purchase return, what is the double entry? Start always with this in your mind. The purchase return is debit payables, which is I think 48 and credit purchase return. Purchase return account should be credited. This is what you should have done. But it said that debit of the sales return account. You made it debit. You should have made it a credit. You are making debit, debit of the sales return account. So what you did that instead of putting it on the credit side, you are putting 48 on the debit side. So when you put 48 on the debit side, it means that you are using the wrong side of the, of the ledger. Instead of credit, you make it a debit. So it has to be a double effect. Okay. So 48 times two, it makes you. 96 debit side should be bigger answer option is d the debit side should be 98 bigger this is your answer d uh, let's see abc what why they are not the answer the credit side is more credit side is more it is not possible because debit has to be more the debit side to be 48 more than the credit side it is not 48 it has to be 96 double effect and says credit side is more it is also not the answer so debit side must be more and it should be more with like double the fact like with $96. Okay. So option D is your answer. Let's move to 17.14. So it says that uh, the following are balances on the account of Luigi, a sole trader, as at the end of current financial year and after all entries have been processed and the profit for the year has been calculated. So profit has been calculated. What is the balance on Luigi's capital account? Capital account. So what comes into the capital account, if you remember? So in this question, the capital account is missing. Actually, if you pay attention, capital account is not given here. So there was a capital account, which they just did not give you. You have to find it yourself. How do you find it yourself? You start making your debit and credit your trial balance and you start writing the numbers. Okay. So for example, non-current asset, 85,000 assets, they come on the debit side. Receivables, they come on the debit side. Payables are on the credit side. Bank loan, 15,000 is on the credit side of the trial balance. Then allowance for depreciation of non-current assets. 
So this is your accumulated depreciation on the credit side of the trial balance inventory, which is an asset 4,000 here. Accruals are liabilities. Accrual liabilities are credit side. Prepayments are your advances. These are your assets you put on the debit side. Bank overdraft is your liability. You put it on the credit side. So these ledger accounts they have given you, you make a total of them and you see how much is there. So one account, the debit side is 98, credit is 36. You see the difference, how much is the difference? The difference is 62,000. So this is a missing account. This was your missing account, which they did not give you. So you put capital as 62,000 and the two sides of the trial balance will be equal because they told you that these these accounts they have taken after completing the all the books and after even calculating the profit okay so the two sides of the trial balance should be equal one account was missing one account was missing we know that logically the two sides should be equal so whatever is missing that is capital and you put in the place capital account 62000 answer option should be c it's pretty simple but you just need to know how to do it mm -hmm.